dear students welcome to my class today we will discuss about how to prepare journal entries based on modern approach or american approach after watching this class if you find this video useful please share it with your friends also you can just give a like to this video and if you have not subscribed this channel yet please subscribe it if you want more videos in english you can just ask it in the comment box give your valuable opinions about this video in the comment box okay let us start our class first of all let me explain what is journal journal is a book that is maintained on a daily basis for recording all the financial entries of the day journal is a book which is maintained for recording all financial entries on a daily basis passing the entries is called journal entry journal entries are passed according to rules of debit and credit of double entry system journal entries are recorded in journal as per the rules of debit and credit of double entry system i will explain what is the debit and credit of journal entry system journal is also known as a day book journal is otherwise known as a day book because as it is recording all transactions on a chronological order journal is called a day book because it is recording all financial transactions on a chronological order chronological order means we are recording journal entries according to the time of occurrence as per the happening on a timely basis so it is called journals are recorded on a chronological order then i will explain what is narration narration is a short description about the transactions in the journal it is given under each journal entry a short description under each journal entry about the transaction is called narration then what is journalizing journalizing is the act of recording transaction in the journal journalizing means this is the act of recording transaction in the journal recording transaction in the journal is called journalizing now let us be acquainted with the, the format of journal this is the format of journal the first column represents the date of transaction the first column represents the date of transaction the second column represents the name of account to be debited there is a particular column under which the first line represents the name of account to be debited this is the line on which we have to debit the accounts this debtor is usually written uh, this side then say so line 2 that is this is line 2 line 2 represents the name of account to be credited line 2 represents the name of account to be credited we are writing the account to be credited here then line 3 for narration of transaction this is where narration is recorded we have to write the narration that means the short, a short description about what has happened a short description about the financial transaction recorded as given as a narration under the journal entry then column 3 this is ledger folio we denote it as lf usually we don't record anything here because Uh, only after preparing ledger account we have to write the page number of ledger here so now we can uh, leave it this is this represents the major number of ledger account on which we post these entries lf means uh, the page number of ledger account on which uh, we are posting these entries to ledger column 4 this is the amount to be debited here this column is mentioned for debiting the amount column 5 is for crediting the amount usually these two amounts are same because it is based on journal entries are based on double entry principle in the under double entry principle for every debit there will have a credit so the debit and credit entries must be same on the basis of amount the debit amount and credit amount should be the same 
because we are passing the general entries on the basis of double entry principle. Now we can study about the rules of debit and credit as per modern approach or American approach. This is the new way of making general entries that is modern approach or American approach. According to American approach, accounts are classified into five categories such as assets, liabilities, capital, expenses and incomes. Note that accounts are classified into five categories. The categories are assets, liabilities, capital, expenses and incomes. We have to know the entries or the items which are included in each of these sections. I will give you an exclusive list of what are assets, what are the usual liabilities, what are the expenses or income. This classification is known as modern approach. When accounts are classified into five categories, assets, liabilities, capital, expenses and incomes, this classification is known as modern approach. The following are debit and credit rule under this approach. We have to thoroughly understood what is the debit and credit rule under American approach. Let us see that. See, there are five account categories here. Assets, liabilities, capital, expenses and incomes. There is debit and credit here. When asset is increased, that asset should be debited. This is the rule regarding assets. When an asset is increased, that asset should be debited. When an asset is decreased, that asset should be credited. In the case of liabilities, the rule get reversed. When liability is decreased, it is debited. And when liability is increased, it is credited. In case of capital, the same rule is applicable here as in the case of liability. When capital is decreased, it is debited. When capital is increased, it is credited. Capital is regarded as a liability. Still, capital is shown as a separate item in the balance sheet. Expenses. In the case of expenses, when expenses are increased, it, they are debited. When an expense is decreased, it is being credited. The same rule applicable in the case of assets. Assets and expenses have same rules with regard to the debit and credit. In the case of incomes, as in the case of capital and liabilities, when income is decreased, it is debited. When an income is reduced or decreased, it is debited. When an income is increased, it is credited. So this is the rules regarding how to debit and credit with regard to the assets, liabilities, capital, expenses and incomes. You have to thoroughly understand these rules. You have to buy heart this rule. You have to understand what to do when an asset is increased, what to do when a liability decreased or increased. In order to study very easily, we can remember these things. Assets, expenses have same rule. Liabilities, capital, incomes have same rule. In order to memorize these rules, you can remember that assets and expenses have same rule. Capital, liabilities and income have same rule. See, when liability is decreased, it is debited. Capital is decreased, it is debited. Income is decreased, it is debited. But in case of assets and expenses, it is if it is increasing, it should be debited. Before starting with the making journal entries, you have to understand what are the usual assets which you can expect in the question. These are the various assets which we have to memorize. Cash in hand, cash at bank, short term investment, bills receivable, sundry debtors, marketable securities, closing stock, furniture and fixtures, plant and machinery, land and building, goodwill, patents, copyrights, trademarks, long term investments. 
There are some liabilities also, bills payable, sundry creditors. It is otherwise known as trade creditors. See, here sundry debtors is an asset. Here sundry creditors are liabilities. Bank overdraft. Bank overdraft means we are withdrawing money more than what we have deposited. This is case of liability. This is a current liability. Then short term loans, loans, long term loans and capital and or own is equity. Capital is otherwise known as own is equity. This is also shown in the liability side of balance sheet. Actually capital is a liability for the businessman but it is separately shown in the liability side. Then these are the list of expenses. Carriage invader, octroi, wages, carriage, that means it may be carriage outward, customs duty, factory expenses, factory rent paid, salaries, office rent paid, discount allowed or paid. Discount allowed or paid is an expense, but discount received is an income, not that point. Commission allowed or paid is an expense, but commission received is an income. Interest paid is an expense, interest received is an income. Insurance, insurance paid is an expense. Bank charges, legal charges, repairs, advertising, trade expenses, office expenses, borders, traveling expense, stationery, traveling expense has been repeated here. Just leave it. Telephone bill expenses, these are the list of expenses. Rent received is an income. Rent paid is an expense. So, you have to thoroughly understand and memorize this list for making journal entries. Now, let us solve a problem in which we are asked to generalize. Generalize the following transactions in the book of Mr. Ashish. 2015 September 1st, he commenced business with cash. He commenced business with cash means he started business with the cash. Rupees 1,80,000. He has purchased goods on 4th September for cash rupees 15,000. He purchased furniture on 8th September for rupees 16,000. Oh, these are the various transactions on which we have to make journal entries. So let us start making journal entries or recording journal entries. Now we have taken first three transactions for recording in the journal. First of all draw a, the format of journal in the books of Ashish journal. This is the caption. Date particulars LF two amount columns. One for debit and another one for credit amount. Let us take the first business transaction. Commenced business with cash rupees 180,000. For making recording, for making or recording journal entries, we have to identify two elements in each transaction. For every transaction, they will have at least two elements. In this transaction, firstly understand what is happened. Commenced business with cash. Business started with the cash. When a business is started and bringing cash, capital is brought into the business. So capital is one element. Capital is brought into the business in the form of cash. So cash is another element. So we have identified two elements in this transaction. One is capital and another one is cash. So we have to just apply the rules regarding cash, the asset and capital. Let us see what are the rules. These are the rules which we studied just before. When capital is bringing into the business, it is increased. So capital is increased. When capital is increased, it should be credited. That is why capital is credited here. This is credited in the name of the owner. So Ash is capital or, or you can just write as capital account. When capital is increased, it is credited. 
capital is brought into the business in the form of cash cash is an asset and asset is increasing here so cash is debited when an asset increases it is debited so cash account at to capital account this is written here just to know what is happen when an asset increased it should be debited when you are writing in the examination you need not write this here you just write cash account at to ashes capital account you can give a, a just a narration started business with the cash you can just write the question without amount here also then let us move to the next transaction purchased the goods for cash rupees 15000 purchased goods means we have purchased goods into the business when we are making purchasing goods it should be recorded in purchase account purchase account is maintained for recording transaction related to goods only if you are making any other assets like furniture land building etc it is treated in that asset account but when we are making purchases or when we are purchasing goods we have to deal it with the purchase account purchase account should be debited here because we can take it in two ways consider it as goods as stock goods is otherwise called stock stock is an asset we are making purchases so goods or stock is increasing when an asset increases it should be debited but we are debiting not in the name of asset because we are purchased goods so purchase account should be debited we can think it in another way also purchase take it as an expense if you are purchasing something we are making payments and it is taking as just as an expense expense is increased when we are making purchases when expense increasing it should be debited then we have purchased for cash we have paid cash for the goods purchased so we have decreased cash in our hand we have lost cash we have paid cash cash has been decreased so cash is an asset when an asset is decreased it should be credited that is why cash is credited here here asset decreasing cash is decreasing so 15000 should be uh, credited also this amount 15000 it should be stretch in the line of purchase account it has been uh, written a little bit lower it should be written uh, stretch to the purchase account 15000 should be written here cash account 15000 should be written here also okay then we are moving to the next question next transaction purchased furniture for rupees 16000 we have purchased furniture here in this transaction we have purchased goods so purchase account should be debited when we are purchasing any other asset that asset should be debited we should debit that asset means furniture account should be debited furniture is an asset when we are purchasing furniture that asset is increased so it should be debited so furniture is debited here then we have purchased furniture by pay paying cash purchased furniture for rupees 16000 so we have paid 16000 rupees so cash is decreasing here cash is an asset when an asset decreases it should be credited that is why cash is credited here purchased furniture a short a narration is also given then moving to the next transaction sold goods for rupees 14000 we have sold goods for rupees 14000 when we are making sales or when we are selling goods we have to open another account called sales account when we have purchased goods we debited purchase account 
when we sell goods it should be credited sales account should be credited we have sold goods for cash so cash has arrived into the business cash is increased the cash is an asset when an asset increasing it should be debited so cash is debited here we have credited sales account because we have lost or decreased asset like goods stock so sales account is credited here we can take it in another way also we can treat sales as an income when we are making sales our income is increasing when an income is increasing it should be credited cash sales can be given as a short narration amount should be given straight in this line then next transaction bought goods from madhu that means purchased goods from madhu a name has been mentioned here please note this name because when we are making anything if you have purchased for cash we need not mention the name there here the name of the seller has been given here so we should treat it as a credit purchase when a name of the person is given in the transaction in case of purchase or sales it should be treated as a credit transaction it is not specifically mentioned in this transaction that we have purchased goods for cash the term cash is not given here we have purchased goods from madhu for rupees 20000 because we should take it as we have purchased goods on credit from madhu so the two elements here are one is madhu and another one is we have purchased goods so naturally purchase account is there we have purchased goods when we are purchasing goods purchase account should be debited there is no change in that so purchase account is debited here assume that p u r c h e s purchase is there goods for asset increases so purchase account is debited and madhu account is credited why madhu account is credited here who is madhu to the business if we have purchased on credit from madhu we need to pay the cash in future to madhu so madhu is credited to the business who is a creditor creditor is a person to whom the business fame or something if you have to pay cash to anybody that person is called a creditor so madhu is a creditor here creditor is a liability creditor is a liability for the business when we are making credit purchase the liability is increasing we have to make payment in future to madhu so he is a liability liability is increased here when a liability is increased it should be credited that liability that creditor madhu should be credited here bought goods from madhu on credit give a short narration we are moving to another transaction sold goods to shyam for cash rupees 8000 see a name has been mentioned here even though a name has been mentioned here it should not be taken as a credit to sale because it has been specifically mentioned that the transaction happened for cash the element the term cash has been specifically mentioned in the transaction so we need not consider sham here we have sold goods and we have received payment in cash rupees 8000 so leave the sham here we can take sales and the cash of the two elements here cash has arrived because we have sold goods for cash cash is an asset when an asset increases it should be debited then sold goods we have decreased stock or we have received income when an asset when an asset is decreasing or an income is increasing it should be credited so sales is credited here 
sales is credited here. Then another transaction sold goods to Ahil for rupees 9000. See the name has been mentioned here, so it should be a credit sale. There is, there is no specific mentioning about the cash. So this is a credit sale. So the two elements to be considered in this transaction for recording are sales and Ahil. Ahil is debited. Who is Ahil to the business? We have sold goods to Ahil on credit. So Ahil is the person who has to pay money to the fame in future. He is a debtor. Debtor is a person who owes some money to the business. So Ahil is debtor to us. Debtor is an asset. When an asset is increased, it should be debited. So Ahil is debited here. Then another element, sales. When goods are sold, sales account should be credited because goods or asset is decreasing here or we have received income. When income increasing, credit it should be credited. When asset decreasing, it should be credited. Whatever it may be, we have to credit sales account here. Then moving to next transaction, paid Madhu cash rupees 7500. Then what are the two elements to be considered for journal entry here? We, have, we can identify that one element is Madhu and we have paid cash so next element is cash here. Who is Madhu to the business? Madhu was a person from whom we have purchased goods so we have to make payment to Madhu. Madhu is a person to whom we have to make payment. So, Madhu is a creditor. Creditor is a liability. When Madhu is paid, our present liability is decreased. If we have to give 7500 rupees to Madhu and after giving this amount to Madhu, there is no liability. Liability is decreased. So, Madhu is debited here. When we are making payment to any creditor, that creditor should be debited because debited because when liability is decreased, it should be debited. We have paid cash to Madhu. So, cash is decreasing here. Cash is an asset. When an asset is decreasing, asset should be that asset here. Cash should be creditor. When an asset is decreasing, that should be creditor. Then another transaction paid for stationery. Stationery is an expense. Stationery is an indirect expense. So when an asset, when an expense is paid, when an expense is met, expense is increasing. If you are spending 1000 rupees for stationery, our expense is 1000. On the next day, if you are making payment on stationary rupees 2000, our total expense is 3000. So, whenever an expense is paid or expense is met, that expense is increasing. So, stationary is an expense and that expense is increasing. So, it should be debited. That is why stationary is debited here. Expense increased. Then we have paid cash for stationary, purchasing stationary. Cash is an asset. So, the rules regarding the asset should be considered here. When an asset is decreased, we have paid cash. So, that asset has decreased here. When an asset is decreased, it should be credited. That is why that cash account is credited here. Then, received cash from Ahil. We have received cash from Ahil. So, cash is the first element here. Then, we have received cash from Ahil. Ahil paid us cash. Then Ahil might be the person who owes some money to the business firm. So whenever Ahil makes payment to the business firm, Ahil was an asset. Ahil was a debtor. Debtor is a person who owes some money to the business firm. So whenever he pays the money to the business firm, the debtor asset is decreasing. So Ahil should be creditor. Here, see, Ahil is credited. We have received cash from Ahil. So, 
cash is debited cash is an asset when cash is received that asset is increasing that is why it is debited see cash is debited the net next transaction received commission rupees 300 see we have received commission so commission is an income if we have paid commission it should be taken as an expense but we have received commission it should be taken as an income when an income is increasing that income should be credited when an income is increasing that income should be credited that is why commission is credited here we have received, received a commission in the form of cash so cash is the another element cash is an asset cash is the increased here when asset is increased that asset should be debited so cash is debited next paid salary is to account salary is an expense when an expense is paid that expense is increasing so when expense is increasing that expense should be debited so salary account should be debited salary account debtor we have paid salaries to accountant in the form of cash so the next element is cash we need not consider accountant here we need not mention about the accountant in the journal entry because we have paid salaries and we have paid cash salaries and cash should be taken here just leave accountant here so salary account to cash account next element is paid rent to landlord here also the landlord need not consider here we have paid rent rent is an expense rent is an expense whenever a rent is paid expense increases so it should be debited so rent discount is debited here rent account debtor and we need not consider landlord here also we, we have to consider the cash payment the cash element we have paid cash so cash asset decreased when asset is decreasing that asset should be credited so cash account is credited here now we have successfully generalized every transaction given the question if you find this video lecturing useful please like this video share with your friends also uh, do not forget to subscribe this channel if you need any more classes in english you can freely ask it in the comment box you can give the valuable your valuable opinions about this class in the comment box also okay bye